In this recording, we will look at how we can sketch three-dimensional curves in the case where we are considering a particle travelling through three-dimensional space, where this is given in position vector form initially. R equals xti plus ytj plus ztk. So here the parameter t would represent a given time when that particle is travelling along its path. And the first thing we can do is rewrite this as scalar parametric equations because I represents the x coordinate of a point at a given time, so x is equal to x of t. J represents the unit vector in the y direction, so therefore yt represents the y coordinate and k is the unit vector in the z direction, so z can be rewritten as z of t. And we can then plot points x, y, z for different values of t in order to get an approximate sketch of the curve in 3D. So here is an example. We're looking at a particle travelling along the path defined by r equals 2 cos t i plus 2 sine t j plus tk. So once again we look at the coefficient of i to get the x coordinate of the point at a time t which is x equals 2 cos t. Similarly looking at the coefficient of j y equals 2 sine t here and looking at the coefficient of k z equals t in this example. Now to graph this here we're interested in looking at it for values of t ranging from 0 to 5 pi on 2 radians. So we should pick values in that range going up in increments so that we get a reasonable representation of our curve. And in this case, in fact, if we go up in increments of pi on 2, that will give us a reasonable approximation. So that means let's pick t equals 0 since that's the start of our range then pi on 2, then pi, 3 pi on 2, then 2 pi, and lastly the end point of the range we're interested in, which was 5 pi on 2. And now using this expression we work out our x, y and z coordinates. So when t is 0 for instance, x will be 2 cos 0, which equals 2 y will be 2 sine 0, which is 0, and z will be t, so z is also 0 when t is 0. Similarly, and we'll just call that point A, let's say. It is important here to label our points. t equals pi on 2 radians, so x is 2 cos pi on 2, which is 0. y is 2 sine pi on 2, which is 2 and z is equal to pi on 2. And I'm going to approximate these values because it's just an approximate sketch. It'll be reasonable just to do this correct to one decimal place here to help with graphing. So pi on 2 to one decimal place rounds off to 1.6. Continuing on with t equals pi, x equals 2 cos pi, which is negative 2, y equals 2 sine pi, which is 0, and z equals pi, which correct to one decimal place, is 3.1. And we'll call that one point C, while the point for pi on 2 was point B as well. Now looking at 3 pi on 2, similar logic, 2 cos 3 pi on 2 is 0, 2 sine 3 pi on 2 is negative 2, and 3 pi on 2, approximately 4.7, and that is point D. 2 pi, 2 cos 2 pi is 2, 2 sine 2 pi is 0, and 2 pi is approximately equal to 6.3, that's point E. And finally at 5 pi on 2, 2 cos 5 pi on 2 is 0, 2 sine 5 pi on 2 is 2, and 5 pi on 2, correct to one decimal place is 7.9, and that is point F. So we have our points, now we need to graph them. 
And so here we're going to graph them in this three-dimensional box, just looking at our axes first of all. In this diagram we're taking this axis along here to be the x-axis. This one here is the y-axis, where those are the positive sides of those axes in each case, and the vertical axis will be the z-axis in our sketch. So our first point A had coordinates 2, 0, 0, if we look at the first row of our table here. So how do we plot A with coordinates 2, 0, 0 in three-dimensional space? X is equal to 2 here, so that means we're going 2 along the x-axis, so this direction here. Now Y and Z are both 0, so therefore in fact point A, 2, 0, 0, is just going to be there, so we'll label that A for future reference. Now the point B, we were going to plot, that was when t equals pi on 2, so that had coordinates 0, 2, and approximately 1.6. So how does that fit into our picture? Well in this case x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2, so we're going 2 along the y-axis, z is equal to 1.6. And for convenience, to demonstrate this, you'll see those little ticks on the vertical z-axis. Each of those I've actually had going up in steps of pi on 2, so that that first tick is approximately at 1.6. So therefore, 0 in the x-direction, 2 in the y-direction, and then from there we're going up 1.6 vertically, which means that point B is going to be about here, if we look at that. What about point C, which was when t is pi? Well, C had coordinates negative 2, 0, and then approximately 3.1, looking at our table. So where is that? Well, that's x equals negative 2, y equals 0, z is 3.1, so that's going up 3.1 units, which means that we end up with point C being about here. So again, just confirming that's basically going negative 2 in the x direction, and then going up 3.1 units vertically. Using the same general principle, Point D is 0, negative 2, and then 4.7. So point D is going to be about here, for instance. Point E has coordinates x equals 2, y equals 0, z equals 6.3. So that means that point E, in fact, is going to be about here. And you'll notice E is directly above A. And finally, for point F, X equals 0, Y equals 2, Z is approximately equal to 7.9. So that brings us up here for point F. So the final step then is to join these points together. And this will have a bit of a curved shape, it won't be straight line segments. So first of all, going around from A to B. Then we go around with our curve from B to C. C to D. Now you'll notice something interesting. When we go from D to E, you'll notice it loops around there. And then finally from E to F. So you'll notice this appears to have a spiralling shape. And if we look back at our equation, you'll notice x was 2 cos t, y was 2 sine t. And if z had simply been some constant number, such as z equals 0, then x equals 2 cos t, y equals 2 sine t would have simply been a circle with radius 2. But because z is equal to t, that is why this curve is spiralling up. And this curve is actually what is called a helix. And because we had the same coefficient of x and y, both being 2 cos t, 2 sine t, it is in fact a circular helix. So that is an example of drawing a three-dimensional curve on two-dimensional paper.